how. Here's where you can interact with us on our social media, and that includes Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter at y 244 underscore channel. On the ground, we are verified with a blue tick, I tell you. You can't catch us. <laughs> but anyways, you can find us at y 244 underscore channel on the ground and y 244 channel on Twitter, Facebook, including YouTube as well. And you can stream us live on what? Yes, Daily Motion. That's where you can find us. But we are available at DSTV, GoTV, Signet, every TV distribution platform you can find us at Y244 channel. And on this interesting segment today, I'm so excited. If you have no idea, here is what we're going to talk about. Gener the, the impact of generative AI. And literally, what are some of the good things that come with it? Lately, you've seen so many things, especially beautiful things, but you know, some things that are also questionable. So today we have two powerful guests in the studio that are going to paint for us a panoramic view of what exactly is happening in that space. And uh, before I introduce them you can find me personally at Brian Sako 101 that's my handle and now here's the time we introduce our guest so seated immediately on my right she's an amazing beautiful gorgeous lady she's Naima Mujesia she'll tell me if I've mispronounced her name she's a communication specialist and she's currently working at uh, uh, a company called Kit K-I-C-T a -N -E -T. I don't want to mispronounce it, but she'll tell me. And then sitting next to her is Louis Mainga, who is a communications coordinator at Witness. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. All right, how are you feeling? Good. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you guys are giving chorus answers. How are you feeling? Good. <laughs> it's like next question. <laughs> but anyways, uh, feel free, feel free to interact and share more insights. So I'll, I'll start off with you, uh, Neema. First of all, did I pronounce your name exactly? Yes, it's correct. Right. It's actually you know, correct. You know, in this industry, you can be sued for a lot of money for mispronouncing <laughs> names. Yes, <laughs> but yes. just tell us a brief uh, uh, history about yourself and how you landed yourself in this space. Okay, thank you so much, Brian. Uh, what I can say about uh, my history is that I studied media science, whereby I studied at my university, uh, main campus in Eldoret. And uh, during this time, I was really interested in what the tech, the internet had to offer. So uh, during my way up, I got to be able to get into the tech space. Now I work under the name is Kicktanet. Oh, Kicktanet. Uh, yes, it's actually an abbreviation for um, Kicktanet is a multi-stakeholder think tank for people or institutions who are interested or involved in the ICT space. Mm -hmm. We also act as a catalyst for reforms, whereby we stand un under four thematic areas, which is uh, policy advocacy, capacity building, research, and stakeholder management. Right. Yes, and apart from that, we also have a space right. whereby we, we are able to translate um, the ideas that are given to us by our listeners. And through these ideas, we come about with meaningful proposals uh, so that we can be able to, uh, to, to know how to solve the issues that are taking place in the ICT sector as well. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Hi. Yes, Louis? Yeah, so nice to be here. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Louis Mainga, like you mentioned. And uh, how I found myself in this space uh, of communications is the passion I nurtured and tapping into the potential of uh, using various regimes of communications. You know, looking at communications as an art and as a science uh, to create uh, impact in, in society. And of particular interest to me, uh, human rights uh, impact. No. And so uh, I work for this uh, global human rights organization currently called uh, Witness, where we empower people to uh, use video and tech in the defense of, of uh, human rights. And uh, like you agree with me, video is a very important tool of uh, communication. And even so, a very critical source of human rights uh, documentation and uh, storytelling. Yeah. Like for example, uh, if there were an incident of police brutality down the streets here, yeah, right. uh, chances are very high that somebody would be uh, filming that on their, on their smartphone. And so you might even uh, uh, find that footage trending on social media in a very short while. Yeah. And uh, given how uh, access 
to smartphones have, has been uh, democratized. Right. You know, it also means the power to witness violations of human rights is literally in the hands of millions of people, you know, using their phone, their phone cameras. And so at uh, <coughs> Witness, uh, we, we endeavor to step down knowledge, you know, on how to film uh, violations of human rights, uh, how to preserve, you know, these videos, how to, to share uh, these videos uh, leading to justice and accountability. All right, good. That's a, a brief of uh, good history about your background. Now, let me get back to you, uh, Nema. When it comes to AI, you know, a lot of people confuse it with uh, robotics before we get into now what are some of the types of AI. Yes. Uh, initially, me too, I used to think that, you know, AI is, you know, at, at some point we heard the story of Samantha, Sidriki Dogo, Mgina Kakuja, and Alicia, where, you know, there was this metal in form of a lady that can talk to you and, you know, meet your needs. So I used to think, you know, that's artificial intelligence until I had to read and do my research, which I came to learn. Artificial intelligence, in fact, it's more human-centered than robotics. So for a person watching, and they probably don't understand it, do you mind just painting a little picture of maybe what could be the, the line between a robot and artificial intelligence. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, that is quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. the, um, so what I can talk about is now you have, we are t when it comes to generative AI, we are now seeing that, that what you are capturing is the forms that we have in, in generative AI. So the way a human, uh, an, uh, an um, let's say a robot is able to interact in a, in a way that it seems human-like based. It's, it's uh, actually called machine learning. Right. So there's machine learning and there's robotics. Right. So when it comes to machine learning is whereby uh, hum uh, the system, the AI system, it's a type of AI system, right. whereby it is able now to interact, answer questions the way a human can answer. Um, that brings me to what we call the generative pre-trained uh, transformer three, which is chat GPT. Right. So that is kind of what happens. That's what happens there. So when you come to robotics, robotics is also another system whereby now it is taught on how to interact physically to the world. Right. So by this, I mean uh, things such as uh, the drones that we have, the applications as well. Right. So it is, these are just sis different systems within the forms of generative AI. Right. Yes, so there's machine learning and there's robotics. Right. Yes. Now, let's narrow it down to generative AI and how you guys, you know, came to tap into that space. And uh, Louis, you can talk about, about it from a technical uh, perspective. How did it come to exist? Maybe, is it like an invention or just a development? Because in tech, there's always something new, shocking. You might think that today we have drones, tomorrow we'll be having, you know, aliens running something in form of tech. You know, there's always something new, but shocking. So how did it narrow down to generative AI? Uh, I'd uh, like to segue from what uh, Nima was saying uh, generally about uh, artificial intelligence as being a technology, you know, that mimics decision-making capabilities and problem-solving capabilities of, of the human mind, you know, and uh, they're different. Uh, it's a very wide field yeah. which has different subsets, you know, yeah. and Generative AI is, uh, is one of them. Uh, we also have uh, discriminative AI. A discriminative AI? Yes. Uh -huh. and what does that mean? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's more of uh, uh, computing, you know, like it said that it gives you a yes and a no answer, you know, such kind of uh, technology to say, this is a lion. This is not a lion, you know, mm -hmm. that is yes and no when you look right. at it typically. And right. then there is a conversational AI and many others. Mm -hmm. So you've heard of uh, uh, this tool called uh, Siri, or probably yes. you're using it. Yeah, I've used know. Siri a lot. Yeah, right. or even uh, Alexa. Let's say, hey Siri, play some <laughs> song. <laughs> yeah, something like that? Yes. And then it's not just, just a sec. Yeah, yeah just a sec. Just yeah. a sec. That's yeah. now voice AI. Conversational, conversational AI. AI. Yeah. And okay. Alexa still as well. Trying. Yeah. Still trying. Right. And, yeah. uh, and uh, Google Assistant, you know, right. and even Google Maps. Okay. You know, 
these are classical examples of uh, uh, conversational AI. And All even right. uh, uh, most uh, recently, what Nima said about uh, generative AI, there's this tool, you know, that has that has blown all over the place. Uh, lately, it's called uh, Chat, Chat GPT. GPT. Mm -hmm. You know, and the reason why it's it's one of the most popular generative AI tools currently, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And the reason why it's but there are many. Uh, there are I many. saw a list where it was like around ten, but Chat GPT is yeah. like number one or two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably, I think it's because it was a fast mover in the market. Okay. Yeah, one of the reasons why it's popular. And okay. so the reason why it's called generative AI is mm -hmm. because it generates new content okay. based on the data it is right. fed, right? right. And, uh, and so uh, when you prompt it, you know, it relies on text prompts right. uh, to generate like command. detailed yeah. right. responses, you know, right. line by line and right. almost to perfection, almost to perfection. It's not perfect, uh -huh. uh, right? right? So uh, w when you look at it uh, from, uh, from that uh, perspective, right. I think, uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, sophistication and potential to, to scale up uh, this technology. There are other popular ones, uh, which are uh, text to image. So basically, right. you type in a prompt, mm -hmm. and it generates an image. Right. You know, one of those popular tools is called DALE. Okay. And the other one is called uh, Mid Journey. The mm -hmm. other one is called uh, Stable Diffusion. There are tens of them right, uh, right now. I'm sure lately you've seen uh, uh, images, you know, AI-generated images of prominent yeah. uh, world leaders, you know, uh, like the pop in the puffer jacket. Right. Uh, are we able to get them? Um, okay, we'll get them as we go. Continue. Yes, the pop in the puffer jacket, you know, and uh, the pop running away from the police. Uh, a former president of the U.S. running away from, uh, from the police uh, as well, you yeah. know. And when you look at these images, they seem to be very, very uh, realistic. But in real sense, right. they're not real images, you know. Yeah. And interestingly, you can uh, ask a tool like DALE, you mm -hmm. know, to generate a picture of uh, a lion and a rabbit. Right. Uh, sitting next to each other mm. and you know and it's able to generate such a real photo but right. i'd ask you i'd invite the viewers you know to ask themselves in real life scenarios mm. where has a lion and a rabbit you know sat together and, and mm. you know generated yeah. that chemistry you know it's it's not even possible yeah, but it's, a, it's AI, a dark image you, know, yeah. you had tried to share. It's, it's uh, they're still very figuring out the other thing. But no, I'm stuck from I'm stuck at that place where you know uh, I'm I'm trying to think of it from a place of Photoshop. <laughs> Is that not an advancement of Photoshop? Because initially you would uh, you would even edit out a video and. Uh, the background, you are in Atlanta having fun, but the video is just shot here and why in the morning. <laughs> but the background, is that not an, adv an advancement of like photoshopping and editing out or airbrushing? <laughs> yes, uh -huh. obviously it's, uh, these technologies, emerging technologies, you know, are becoming more sophisticated. Right. And you see, as a developer, if you're producing, uh, if you're developing a tool, somebody else would, uh, Obviously, the tool has flaws, and somebody else would pick on that and improve, you know, or right. you can even improve another to produce another version uh, right. of it. So the the basis of the model is uh, basically, you know, the same, but there's uh, the way they s developers, you know, and tech deployers right. scale uh, that up, you know, yeah. to make it more uh, uh, sophisticated, more to add more to add more features. And with AI, uh, these models are trained, you know. Right. They are trained to act within uh, some probabilities, you know, a set of, a set of data, right, yeah. existing data, largely yeah. from the internet. Right. So when you, that's when, uh, it's so, that's how it's so easy to prompt, yeah. and it gives you an almost accurate right. response, because it's crawling for data mm. across the internet to give you, you know, the results in real time. All right. Yeah. Uh, let me get back to you, Neymar. Uh, still on, on that note. Uh, yes. When you compare Google, Google search, yes. and now chat GPT since you brought it in, uh, yes. I'm also trying to, like, uh, nice, there's an interesting photo. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's going to be coming through in just a bit, you'll see it. Uh, Google and ChatGPT, yes. which is, uh, uh, you, you mentioned another form of it. Yes. Uh, how how can you differentiate between you know google you can google the president and it brings you everything about the president still but on a website or on a link published maybe by someone but then now chat gpt comes in and it's also gathering this information are they not the same thing now um apparently they they're actually the same thing uh -huh. but the other one is different because i have been able to use google i have been able to use chat gpt as well and i can say when it comes to chat gpt the commands it is give it, it's given commands and it's human like uh, text based it's a machine learning system wow. uh, comparing it to google google just takes data in right. it doesn't give you um, like that feeling of connectivity physical connectivity between right. you mm -hmm. and your device your okay. iot device it okay. might be a smartphone it might be a computer so that's right. the difference also when it comes to the content chat gpt has no ads it just gives you when you ask the, you ask um, a question like how how many presidents are there in this country it gives you direct answers so mm. it, comparing it to google it is more direct and uh google has ads it has uh and also when it comes to the information it gives it gives direct information when you're using google let's say you're searching for a recipe it will first give you all those uh why should you use the recipe why should you um do this and this but when you come to chat GPT, it, gives, it just gives you what you, you want, exactly, exactly yeah. what you want, okay. yes. And then when it's uh, comparing it to Google, um, it is still a learning machine. Google has been there for a very long time, so it is widely, it has wide data compared right. to chat GPT. In fact, now yes. for you to use chat GPT, you must be in Google. You can exactly. imagine, yes. Right. So it must, so it, it is just, <laughs> maybe with time there will be a way whereby. It can be like an yes, app. Yes, it can be know, like an app or like app Google stuff. in itself, yes. Right. Yes, it's just a mimic of Google. Right. But the, the thing is they're trying to make it more, when uh, more closer to the source, Right. The data becomes more closer to the source as right. well. So that is the difference between Google, the basic difference between Google and ChatGPT. Right, good, yes. interesting. Now, when it comes to user friendliness uh, for generative AI, before we get to how we can apply it to use it and some of the interesting trends, um, how can we make it um, in, 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 in a sense that, you know, uh, it's not shocking because uh, nobody wants to have manipulated data. And of course, that's where you can even now manipulate data. And mm. data can be in form of numbers, even graphics as well. Yes. How can we make it safer for consumption or for use? Um, first of all, um, I would say that the first thing is now you, you, uh, the, the system has to have a rule-based system whereby we, uh, the system uh, takes, uh, makes preempted rules towards how a person will react uh, okay. so that um, with these rules we are able to find uh, how can I put this a way whereby the information that is given there is factualized right. so with chat GPT actually there's um, something I was watching today morning uh, if you want the right data sources you have to fact check you fact check, check the chat GPT right. so you, you key in your information let's say uh, I want to this book from these uh, resources fact right. check fast right. so it fact checks itself we right. have now to teach the system how to be factual right. yes so that that is one of this, the ways right. also we can be um, we can be able to have um, a place whereby we are using the, the systems that we're using in the internet right. are watermarked. Like right. in the case of whereby I, I have generated an AI um, picture, right. I watermark it that it is AI generated right. so that the audience cannot be informed of what they are, um, cannot be misinformed on what right. they are getting. Right. Yes, also we have to develop some guidelines when it comes to software development Right. and uh, dissemination because okay. are they in kenya like uh, are there organizations ama has the government already tapped into that space in the country yes i now? think uh, as of now we have the office of the data protection commissioner right. i think you've heard about it yeah, sure, sure, sure. yes so they are trying to come up with uh, stipulated guidelines through um 
considering our four thematic uh, pillars, which stand for policy advocacy, nice. whereby they are trying to create awareness at first. Mm -hmm. So when they create awareness, they come to capacity building, whereby they provide trainings as well. That's mm -hmm. also what we do in our organization as Kicktanet. Mm -hmm. So it is just a learning curve that we have to now take in. And and actually, we have to agree that tech is technology is here to stay, and it's not going anywhere. Right. So apart from advocacy, apart from uh, capacity building we have also to build uh, to have a stakeholder management whereby we are saying that we need to involve ourselves in the in such things like the metaverse no. uh, the metaverse was here last uh, the other previous week they no. were having a pan Africa summit uh, no. at Kempinski no. and they were able to tell us that we need to come together as tech innovators as no. um, even content yes creators. content creators no. needs to come together so that we can be able to speak yeah. the same language you no. know when it comes to technology what are the guide what are the guidelines well what what do we consider misinformation or do, do we consider disinformation Right. What do you consider information that will uh, affect a victim? Just like in your previous program, I had you talk about um, the Millicent Omanga scenario. Right. These are things that are happening online. Where right. do we draw, so where do we draw the line as uh, people who are use, as users of the internet? Right. Yes. And and and, and on that Millicent Omanga note, like now for a video yes. that has been you know manipulated. Uh, let me use the word manipulated or has been altered either. How do you fact check? Because that's another form of AI now, like yes. on now on the other side, before we talk about uh, the application. How do you fact check a video like that? You know, it's already out there. And from a person of a certain, you know, uh, personality or a certain reputation in society, already people have already viewed you in a certain way, whether it's true or not. Yes. And there's no way you can clarify and say, no, that's not me. Because there's a lot of things that are now falling apart. And it's tech. Yes. So, um... When it comes to fact-checking fact a video like that, there are so many factors that come in. There are so many tools that can be found online that are used to fact-check videos. Okay. So um, we have uh, a tool in Google as well that you can use to fact-check like images. And also in the Play Store as well, we have the tools, the AI tools that can be used to fact check. But just right. before you fact check, you, you first need to consider the victim. What, is, what can the victim do in order to be able to say this is, this is not me, this is me, you know? First of all, the victim has to consider the fact that the video is out there. So what we do at Kicktanet is that we have developed a digital inquiry kit, mm -hmm. uh, which is an online safety module that okay. uh, helps you in understanding how to say, stay safe online. So right. like the case scenario where your video is out, you first need to start reporting. Right. You report the video. Right. When you report, you encourage others to report for you. So right. the system, you know how the system of... Um, the internet works is right. when uh, a certain content is um, really liked or really uh, talked about. That's when it curates itself to the top. Right. So the more, when, yes, the more people, people tag it, share it, it, yes, share it, yes. Google it, Google search it, it yes. Yeah. So that uh -huh. account is easily, easily detectable, yeah, yes. And mm -hmm. also the perpetrator can be can be well known yeah. if it is said out there. So right. after reporting um, reporting that uh, incident, right. the victim also has to, to figure out what do I do next so they can block that account as well. It okay. is your right to say I can block this account. Right. So apart from just using the tools to now uh, like say that it is now over, I've used the tool and I've proved to you guys it's wrong, we also need to consider what can the victim do as well. Right. Yes, in such a case scenario. Wow, and interesting. To, interesting. Yeah, please. Yeah, do and come to in. also add uh, to uh, Nima's point, uh, there is uh, this thing called uh, media literacy. Yeah. Right, which is the ability to uh, evaluate critically, you know, yeah. information you've been exposed to uh, yeah. online. Yeah. So it's it's always good to uh, take a pause and uh, you know ask yourself. Uh, very basic questions such as uh, which is this uh, account you know that is reporting this video or yeah. this or image. sharing you know yeah or sharing right misinformation yes and, uh, and and also are there other credible sources uh, sharing the same uh, information right you know 
and uh, and even to 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 detect you know to detect uh, misinformation and disinformation uh, you can apply both tech and non tech methods right, right. but okay. if you have the the mindset already it becomes easier for you to uh, discern what is true and uh, and what is not information there's also awareness yes yeah. there's also platform responsibility right, right. where this uh, material is shared you know on these right. platforms uh, I think platforms have done well, but could do better in yeah. terms of uh, moderating, you know, uh, such kind of uh, content. YouTube, right. for example, has a program called uh, YouTube uh, Flagger, which right. uh, confers mm -hmm. powers to users to flag content, content. they find, uh, you know, they find malicious. Uh, yeah. Twitter and uh, Facebook and Instagram, you know, always label, uh, or, or sometimes they do label content, which is... Uh, uh, malicious, although they suffer moderation, you know, uh, capacity issues, yeah, right. like in terms of language. Yeah, you also realize somebody in Atlanta can yeah. curse, but if you curse in Kenya, you're suspended. Yes, yeah. right. yes. So there are those uh, gaps, obviously, which uh, could be improved, but I think uh, media literacy and platform responsibility is important in, right. uh, in curbing issues such as, uh, you know, the sharing of non consensual sexual images. Right. which uh, really affect women, you know, disproportionately. All right, uh, interesting. Now, how do we package it to a point now we are using it in our daily lives? Um, I, I love the photos, even the pop, the pop's photo yeah. is really it, interesting. It, it looks very swaggerific. Exactly, because like, wow. you, you, you <laughs> couldn't have imagined <laughs> yeah. the pop one day would look like a hip hop rap star or something. Yeah. Is there a way that we can use it, especially in our day-to-day -day lives, even in office setups, education setups, even in TV setups, or even health sector as well, yeah. and many other sectors. How can we apply uh, generative AI? Yeah, there are a plethora of applications, uh, you know, good uses of uh, these emerging technologies, uh, right, in, in various sectors, like, like you mentioned. So in, in uh, education, uh, for example, you know, to in terms of development adapt and uh, adaptation of uh, curriculums, right? These are things that AI can uh, really help with, even in terms of uh, e-learning, you know, virtual learning. And when you think about uh, healthcare, you know, the uh, ability it confers to healthcare professionals, you know, to, 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 to generate, uh, uh, you know, like models, you know. So for example, if somebody, if a surgeon wants to perform uh, a, a surgery, right, they can simulate that scenario uh, using AI, first of all, as a group, before doing the, you know, the actual, uh, the actual surgery, right? When yeah. it comes to agriculture, there's something called precisional uh, agriculture, mm -hmm. you know, which is able to predict, uh, using AI to predict uh, weather, weather patterns, you know, and therefore, being able to inform, uh, you know, like the kind of crops yeah. that would do best in that particular uh, particular weather, you know, and Set like mapping conditions, yes, right. soil and testing, via soil testing, GPS, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and all those things, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's very uh, uh, cross cutting, and I, I think uh, Nima is <laughs> the techie <laughs> person yeah. here. Uh, please yeah. come in, yeah. come in and, more and shine more depth. Because yeah. it's really interesting now. It went like from an app manipulating photos yes. or generating, you know, photos. But yes. you mentioned it's very important to watermark it and uh, give credit that this is an AI generated, generated graphic. Yes, right. or image. Okay. Yeah, where we come uh, in terms of applications, as I'll second my, I'll second Louis, okay. and say that um, he's, he was right in healthcare. They've actually developed a lot of drugs. Um, now it's easy for the healthcare system. And also they are now developing 3D and 4D imaging, whereby when you're doing x-rays, you are now seeing the hip bone as it is, you see? Exactly. Yes, as exactly it as it is. So that right. is a trend that is, is called explainable. Right. Uh, the way um, their logarithm is now transparent okay. and is uh, explainable, it gives uh, doctors a, way, uh, a, a, a form whereby they can be able to see you know, to know where, what they're getting into, into and also in decision making when it comes to patients. Apart from that, we also have um, 
the e-commerce system, the finance system, like what happened to Naivas previous, uh, the recently, mm -hmm. they were able now to di dictate where the fraud came from. You yeah, see? they lost the data. Yes, but well, now they were, I think they yeah. were able to recover. They recovered yes, the data. Yes. What if? Now, let's, let's stay there. What if this data landed in, 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 in the hands of somebody who manipulated it and has a copy? Because now you're dealing with people's information that includes bank accounts, their names, their ID numbers, yes. photos. Yes. That's dangerous. That is very dangerous. And maybe you have a Naivas shopping card, whatever. Yes. Now, I think the best way Naivas can be able to um, address this situation is to... Um, ensure that just tell the client your data is out there give them a warning just give them a warning so that they can be able to to know that my data is out there so what should I do next should I close my bank account mm -hmm. should I go to the Huduma Center and say my ID was stolen should yeah. I change my number All so right. you know creating awareness is really important so these organizations need to be really transparent if data has leaked Right. So that is the major step that they can take. Right. Yes. And what Just could have informing. possibly gone wrong? Was it like an infection, a bug, or somebody hacked into it? I'm uh, logging into many software. Because especially for Instagram, it's very common. Your account is not there. <laughs> and yeah. you're really trying to process, <laughs> who is this devil trying to log me out <laughs> of my social media? Yes. Only later on to learn that you know, somebody had your password or mastered mm. you know, your PIN or something. What could have possibly gone wrong in that scenario? I cannot be able to, because they have not yet shared the information to the public, right. so we do not know. You can so guess. I can just create <laughs> a speculation. I can create a speculation. <laughs> create a speculation. Yes. Maybe they could yes. hire you yes. to, to, to <laughs> help them out. Shout out to okay. you. Okay, <laughs> whereby I can say that right. our AI, what, what we call data um, security, is human, mm -hmm. isn't it? True. So when we come to software developers, there are people who are hackers. So right. we have the white hackers and the black hackers. And now hacking is a job. Hacking is a job. It's a job it right. pays you. I can hack from Thailand. Right. I can hack from Kenya. And I pretend I'm in Thailand due to VPNs that we have nowadays. Right. So yes, the VPNs are there to use. Right. So and we'll um, talk about VPN in now in this Millicent Omanga case. Yeah. <laughs> we'll All right. Back. Yeah. So <laughs> when, uh, when neighbors, uh, OK, sorry, I won't mention it. Yeah. But it might be, you know, with these hackers around and they're black hackers. Right. Black hackers, uh, meaning oh, the ones in the, the ones country. That, the ones, no, black hackers, I mean, uh, okay, black hackers are the ones who do illegal activities. All White right. hackers are the ones who do it legally. All so, right. um, oh, Like yes. somebody has a certificate? Yes. And, 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 yes. and, and, and even documents, yes. professional? Like, yes, like in hack. this institution, right. you, you may say, um, we do not want our equipments to get lost. Right. So you hire a white hacker who will come and install equip equipment here, like CCD CCTV cameras, All and right. hack the system mm -hmm. and pretend to be a black hacker so that All they can right. create and develop better systems for your right. organization. But yes. that is the same same person who can also buy, bite you. Yes, but they <laughs> they do sign contracts as well. Oh, they sign yes, contracts? Yes, they sign like contracts. Like an NDA? Abridging, yes, an NDA. And okay. they're always open towards what they do. Yes. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the hackers are there and... Um, and these systems have flaws. Yeah. I will not lie, they have flaws because they're developing every day. And right. with the assistance of um, you know, software developers even being transparent as we, as we tell them to be on YouTube, if I learn a system whereby I can hack, you know, right. I'll be able to use it. Because maybe, you know, I'm a youth just on YouTube. I don't have so many priorities. I don't have so many things to do. I learn one or two things about hacking. I go to the CBD. I right. go to outside maybe uh, a hotel in the CBD. I enter into the Wi-Fi system. I am able to hack into the Wi-Fi system. So anybody who is using that Wi-Fi system, in case they do a bank transaction, Right, or logging into an yes, app. Yes, during the way, yes, or logging into an app or just, we, we say when they're doing very, these critical systems such as bank transactions, um, M -Pesa, the M -Pesa yes, the M -Pesa and transactions, the and just where you put your PIN and password. Right. If I am outside there and I am a black hacker who has trained myself on YouTube, right. you see, yeah. I can be able to 
to manipulate to hack you. that. Yes, you I can know. be able to hack you and manipulate your data. Right. That's why we even encourage people when you are in a public space, do not, do not when you are using Wi-Fi, do not do any bank transactions, do not put in your pins, especially right. when it comes to email, when it comes right. to your phone passwords, when mm -hmm. it comes to your IDs, do not put such informations, uh, information in your in your phones or IoT devices that you have. Right, yes. interesting. It reminded me of the story at Diana Bahati where the YouTube channel got suspended, but you know, they have the money to hire people to undo some darts. But there, there's this artist, uh, there's a friend of mine who is a content creator as well. His YouTube got hacked. Yes. And then he took like a month, hired somebody to do it. Now, I'm, I'm, I pity the artists who don't have money to, you know, undo some things that yeah. would have saved you from the pain of losing the hard work you yes, put in for yes. 10 years. You can imagine yes. now a white hacker is there or yes. a black hacker to just undo the damage no it's the white hacker and the white hacker yes, is going to who's undo going that. to undo the damage okay. but also it is so sad that you know somebody like from an artistic point of view an right. artistic industry whereby you're trying to make your music better you've developed content for like five years and then within no more. time yes yeah. or even more and you have so many you even have the plank card of youtube the silver yeah. plank card whereby you're getting now income right. and now you get uh, that your content has been shut down. Yes. So where and they're telling you they yes. can't recover it so I think <laughs> soon. Yes, and I think there should be a system whereby someone should be able to recover their data. Right. Yes. Do we have YouTube offices in Kenya? I think we have Google and Facebook. Facebook, yes. I heard they shut out. Um, in Kenya, I, I'm not so sure. There's Google. Sure. There's, There's Google, Google yes. Yes. And yeah. there's Meta as well. And Meta yeah. as well. Meta, yeah. right. Metaverse. Yeah. Metaverse, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Which is, yeah. uh, which is now combining uh, Facebook and, and Insta Instagram and WhatsApp and now. WhatsApp, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah I, I wanted to enrich uh, uh, the discussion. And <laughs> it's very interesting uh, how, you know, there is black hacking and white hacking. And I didn't know that. And, <laughs> I and black, to God, you know, <laughs> I didn't know there's white hacking and black hacking. Yeah. yeah. And for the blacks, obviously, you know, it's, it's a negative connotation. Why should they be the ones who are the bad ones? You know? right. And the yeah. white are the ones who are the ethical like hackers. White collar jobs, blue collar jobs. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah. There's like a thin line between color differentiation. Yeah. 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 Like how the, you know, shows how the black uh, race has been, has been framed, really. Right. Huh. Yeah. The connotations are just... Yeah, like even the word blackmail. You know, why right. don't you have white Exactly. <laughs> There's even somebody who was arguing, why should a car have black tires? Yeah. Yeah. But then there's somebody who came back with a comeback, Akasema, but we use white toilet paper, so what are you telling me? <laughs> I was like, wow, yeah. that one, you nailed it. Yeah. We use white, but there's... I've, I've not seen red toilet paper or pink, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, anyway, uh, there is a need for... Uh, organizations, mostly organizations and even individuals, to invest in, uh, uh, you know, robust uh, security, you know, when it comes to online hygiene. Good, like, online hygiene. Yes. Sometimes like, called digital footprints. Right? Yes, yeah, exactly. Or cyber hygiene as well. Yeah, cyber hygiene, yes. right? Because uh, you can imagine the incident, like the hacking of uh, Kabarak University. Right. And how costly. I, I saw that. I saw yeah, that. In terms Somebody of from Netherlands or what country was it? I even don't know, but, you know. Or China. In terms of Any reputational of damage. Yeah. yeah, it really cost, uh, it, it cost the, the, the university, yeah. right? So mm. uh, there's a study that came out, I think, uh, a few years ago to, s uh, to show how uh, Kenyans save their passwords you know using their names yeah or uh, date of birth very simple right? it's possible to at least have among 10 kenyans yeah at least five of them have a password related to their, to their name, name or, or or their date ID of birth. number yeah, yeah. so birth. it's very easy to yeah. hack you know right and these are the same uh, security features they apply to you know as admins of those uh, pages like for facebook you need to be an admin you know for you to manage a page right you need yeah. to be a to profile an individual right. profile right. to manage a page, right? right. Mm -hmm. So somebody can use that uh, very easily. And I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if they went through one of personal, you know, the personal profiles of uh, this, uh, this person. Yeah. yeah. So they, there are things like two factor uh, authentication. Very authentication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Even where for Gmail if, now. Yeah. yeah. If somebody is trying to log uh, into your Facebook, uh, you know, in an unauthorized manner, you can be able to arrest that, you know, before it happens, because right. you'd always get a notification that, 
was this you? You tried uh, logging in, you know, from Kiambu, and yet you are in, in, in Nakuru, right? Yeah. So you're able to arrest uh, that, uh, that uh, situation. And right. also investing in capacity. Like, can we have retraining, you know, of uh, these uh, social media managers, uh, or, you know, administrators, web managers, on yeah. security? Because the threat keeps on evolving. The hackers uh, are getting smarter, you know. So hence they need to be always ahead of you know, the curve or aligned to trends that are happening in terms of digital security. Interesting. Now, <clears throat> we had mentioned story uh, VPN. <laughs> and uh, recently I had a conversation with a friend who was saying she doesn't use the Kenyan VPN because yes. there's content he views. And I was like, bro, what do you mean? So you just use the Kenyan VPN. And then he started talking about uh, my Google search history, uh, he was telling me that for me, Sako, if I gave you my Google search history, you would judge me badly, you would <laughs> say I'm a bad person, you'd say I don't have more, but I was like, but why? As in, you are what you are, why should you be so scared? So to a point, like, you don't want anybody to know your search history. And uh, he was telling me about stories, uh, you know, personality damage, nini, nini. How, how, what, what, how is it important now, like, to change VPN? Okay, um, it depends with, with who has the VPN. Okay. So if, if it is from a genuine perspective whereby, like the case of your friend, he's going to be judged wrongly by the society or by even you, and you're calling yourself his friend, you know, it really raises alarms. So um, VPN, how they normally work is an, an, an undictatable system. Right. Whereby I cannot know your location. I cannot know which account because it is an anony an anonymous, anonymous. Uh, yes, account. Right. So um, for this case scenario, VPNs are normally used to get white collar jobs as well. Because not most white collar applications can suffice with what we have here in Kenya, can suffice with the IoT device that you have. Um, because uh, looking at our geographical or our our, uh, where we stay, where we stay in Africa or in Kenya, this means that some jobs are just meant to stay in, in the western side. So right. when you have a VPN, you can be able to say, I'm working from California. All right. You see? But that, that's cheating. It is cheating, <laughs> but... Uh, cheating in know, some form of web, but good cheating. It's, it's <laughs> like, yeah, in a case scenario, right. maybe because this is a youth channel, just imagine a youth who does not have work, Right. Who does not? Uh, uh, who has parents who are looking up to him, or wow. mostly it's a him, mm -hmm. compared to what our cultural beliefs in the society. Right. Mm -hmm. So you find out this youth has no choice right. but to search for a VPN, a paid VPN, which is which can be paid for one or two years if you want, right. and you are able to work and say you are in the US just to get the dollar. Right. True, 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 true. Yes, so you will use PayPal, and nowadays PayPal had the, has, has been able to connect with M-Pesa, so right, you can true. easily transfer your money from PayPal to M-Pesa. Right. So that is also uh, tech in there, that is right. also generative um, AI in there somewhere. <laughs> right. Yes. So um, looking at a VPN, it depends, as I was saying, it depends with who has it. So that is for good people. Right. For bad people who are trying to... Like now the Millicent Omanga, somebody posted that video. Yes acted like they're not in Kenya, yes, they but they're just here, you know. Yes, they must have and you can't stress them and get them now. It is impossible. Right. It is, now you know, who, who you know what you happens? Because <laughs> now you have to be now mad at yourself now. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, the, the internet is a developing space, as I've said. No. And very soon, these algor algorithms that are there are going to be, we are going to have a system whereby we can now have people who can detect them. But now, you know, in every 12 disciples, there's always a Judas. Mm -hmm. So we can mm -hmm. say that um, these systems we are learning. Mm -hmm. And as we learn, we will be able now to get this is the person. This is the person who did it through this VPN. But it is a learning curve for us now, right. especially for software developers as well. Because I, I feel like this is the time Africa is waking up. <laughs> There's usually that soundtrack, Wake Up Africa, yes. where tech is moving fast, agri-tech is moving fast. Yes. There's innovations, there's scientific discoveries, and many more. So it's, it's like you said, it's a continuous development curve. Yeah. Now, are there maybe possible solutions and recommendations as well? Uh, have, have we talked about the trends? 
um, the trends in generative AI. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we've we've, we've touched. Churned on a yeah, few. we've churned on a few. We've mm -hmm. churned on explainable AI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've not churned on ethical AI. Yeah, whereby pl we have, can talk um, about it. Yeah. We have guidelines set in place. Uh -huh. Right now, like the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner, whereby they're setting um, guidelines on where do we draw the line on this. I think we talked about that as well. Right. Mm -hmm. We have we have what we call AI democratization where now we have accessibility and inclusivity. Now, um, there's this thing that organizations are now adapting to is whereby they're trying to now say persons with disabilities, what yeah. can we do about to, people, to people with disability, sorry, people with disability, what can we do to include them in the internet space? Right. For us, Kicktanet, we have been able to develop a website for them. Uh -huh. So that they can be able to say they they Even have when, when a yes, person is blind yes, hearing they have, problems. Yes, hearing problems. We have what we call alter, alternative texts. What right. is called alt texts that people alt. can use. Mm -hmm. um, it is a form whereby I have an image. Okay. So let's go here together. I have an image, mm -hmm. and then the image maybe it's of me sitting down. Right. So I'll write. Do we have those images? Are they ready? Please, if, if they're ready, she'll talk about them as we exit. Yeah, there is right. an image and then I'll write my, my, my description down there. Right. So what the system does, that is alternative text. I think you have seen an alt on images nowadays on right. Twitter true, 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 true. And, yes, yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. So that is, al, 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 uh, that is democrat democratization, democratization of AI, mm -hmm. yes. So right. apart from democratizing AI, we have... Um, what we call the ethical issues we have. I think those are well vast areas that we've talked about when it right. comes to the trends that are there in AI. Yeah, as, yes. we, sum it, as we sum it up, I'm told you have two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you can say your final remarks and then you'll say where people can access you. Yeah, uh, uh, in terms of the next, uh, uh, next level, the trends, there's something called artificial super intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's like, like I can literally the next level. Yes, <laughs> like Tech. read brain signals. You know, ah, uh -huh. like right now you're prompting. You're just right. prompting. But can you imagine a technology that is able to like read what read you your mind and produce body language yeah, on a screen somewhere? That uh -huh. would be outrageous, right? Exactly. And it, it's beyond uh, human intelligence and even uncontrollable. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I think uh, in terms of the implications to trust and, and uh, truth, you know, like what uh, you mentioned, uh, there is a need for, uh, you know, responsibility, pipeline responsibility yeah. from the tech uh, developers, deployers, you know, to even other people, upstream stakeholders, such as regulators, yeah. to ensure that uh, the product design of these tools, you know, is grounded in, in ethical considerations, is, yeah. is responsible. Right. And also the data protection yes. is, is there. Yes, that's why the data protection is there and other, other uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And a central theme of, uh, of witness uh, strategic vision you know, is to fortify uh, the truth of critical you know, voices who are defending uh, human rights right. so, so that their efforts you know, and uh, their agency are not threatened by you know, emerging tech, you know, issues caused by emerging tech. Yeah. like misinformation and, uh, and disinformation. And they do this across uh, our pipeline. Right. So for example, from when you're filming a video, you know, from when you are preserving, from when you are uh, sharing it and right. presenting it, for example, to an accountability mechanism, like a yeah. court of law, how right. do you ensure you know, that evidentiary value is, you know, is very high? How do you across that, uh, across that uh, pipeline? Right. But uh, most importantly, uh, I think, uh, it depends where you, you see it on the tech uh, spectrogram, uh, really, whether tech is good or tech is bad. As for me, yeah. I'm a technology optimist who, right. you know, prepares and thinks like a, like a pessimist. Right. So <laughs> it's like prepare for the best, but pray for the worst. Yes. Or pray for the worst, but still hope for the best. Yes, yes. Right. So for more insights about uh, uh, our work, you can visit uh, the Witness website, which uh -huh. is www.witness.org. Right. And even better yet, you can track uh, the uh, generative AI conversation on Twitter, hashtag GenAIAfrica. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is, that, is that your final point? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, social media? You've said, you've said the website and social media as well? Oh, our social media is right. at uh, witness uh, underscore Africa. Okay. Yeah. Nemo? 
Um, thank you so much, Brian, for having us here. And what I can say about this conversation is that we need to consider that AI is growing and right. it's transforming how we create and how we think. Right. So it is a ma it's a matter it's a matter to take consideration uh, to take great consideration when it comes to research. Right. We need to have more research, especially for the youths who are becoming content creators, innovators, software developers, who want to work in the tech industry as well. We need to study, we need to learn. Right. There is no way out of this because without learning we cannot have um, growth. True. We cannot we cannot grow we cannot grow even if metaverse comes here and explains what they want to do we cannot have that we, we cannot absorb what they want us to to learn right. Right. so it is proper for us just to know that tech is here to can stay. we include it in yes. our school curriculum if possible as a recommendation as a recommended yes actually I was to, to tap on that mm -hmm. um, you know they are, they are saying AI is difficult, but you yeah. know it was meant it was made by a man with yeah. a brain, two eyes. You know, True. you know yeah. it is made by a person. It's not a robot. It is now. not a robot now. Because <laughs> initially, yes, you thought, yes, you know, AI is, is robotics. So yeah. it is um, like the case scenario where he was talking about um, the use of uh, superficial, uh, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. instruments. China. I was watching yesterday. China has now developed headbands, whereby right. students in class can be you can see if a student is concentrating or not so when the headband wow. turns red yeah. the student is concentrating so you can't daydream yes. kidogo you can't daydream <laughs> it will turn blue and the teacher will note that this student yeah, this is, not is not concentrating that's dangerous uh, yes apart see, from well, that, it's Kenyan not it's, it's not dangerous <laughs> if you put it you know right, at yeah. the end of the day the parent gets a, a graph what right. did my child do but right. i'm seeing it it is not dangerous because but how now is it connected to your brain it is that super, it's not connected. It's actually it's it reads actually. Right. It's, it's just trained. Uh, it's trained. To it's read. trained yes. to capture vibrations. To capture uh, and capture signals, vibrations and signals. signals. Is it related to a lie signals. detector machine? A lie detector. Uh, I've seen recently. So now a Kenyan who did a lie detector test. Yes. Yeah. How do you detect if somebody is lying? Because I've seen it happen in American reality TV shows where a spouse was taken to court and yes. they did a, a session, they asked them like 10 questions and the ones they said, they answered wrongly, the machine was, was able to detect you slept with someone. Why can't we have the same in Kenya so that we solve these cheating cases? <laughs> yes, I think um, the tech is actually quite expensive. Oh, it's very yes, expensive. It's very expensive. Okay. So for it to come here even to come in the country, you need first to understand it, you know. You right. cannot just be importing and exporting things out of the country, you know. Yeah. So how this um, line di dictator works is mm -hmm. that it actually uh, dictates your nerves. Right. You know, when you're anxious, because yeah. you'll be asked when you're lying, mm -hmm. your heartbeat starts racing. But you, you can be a chronic liar. You can you lie. But there are people I won't you lie, lie to you. professionally. There are people who have already mastered this system of lie detection, so it is ah. actually there. So they can yeah. pass through a lie detector yes, test. They can pass through a lie detector oh my set goodness. test. But so let me <laughs> just do my parting <laughs> shot because I've not right. done it. Yeah, um go. I'll encourage people to um log into our website which is yeah. ww.ke and uh, when you log in there, you will find most of the works that we've been able to do from policy advocacy, capacity, capacity building research and um, stakeholder engagement. And also we have a mailing list subscription whereby we have numerous conversations with different people from different sectors and fields uh, concerning what is happening in the tech space. So I'll encourage people to do that. And also for all our platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, we had to go to get into TikTok to get into the trend as well yeah. Yeah. facebook and uh, twitter we are known as kicktanet thank you so much all right yes nani nataka kupea na namba hiyo ni bonus hakuna so it's all right <laughs> it's all right thank you guys for coming thank through you. it has been thank quite an so insightful much. conversation i didn't know about uh, i'm still stuck at a black hacker and white hacker i had no idea about that thank you guys thank
And I wish you the very best. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So, so we have been speaking to uh, Louis Mainga, who is a communications coordinator at Witness. He has shared very insightful uh, 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 details about you know, generative AI, including the beautiful Nema Mujesia, who is a communication specialist from Kicktonet. And definitely, if you have a problem and you need a solution, they are the experts. They'll definitely get to you. And on this note, we're going to take a very short break because uh, Kalami Vala is coming up next. We're going to dance. It's about, you know, if you don't have choreography, it's time to Google how to dance right now. On that hashtag, why in the morning, personally, at Brian Sakuan at Y254 underscore channel on the gram. Here we go.